Hi, this is Kendrick with uh, worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about bipolar disease. This is a disease that affects around 2% of uh, the population of the United States. Um, more so if you're famous. Um, Kurt Cobain is a good example. Uh, Robert Downer Jun Downey Jr. was reported to have bipolar disease. He, he did denies that and uh, I'm actually guessing that he doesn't, considering that he seems pretty stable over the last few years. The diagnostic criteria for bipolar disease involve at least a week of the um, manic symptoms that we've talked about. So um, we haven't talked about those, just kidding, that we're going to talk about right now. Elevated mood. Uh, sometimes it's it's more of an agitation than, than an elevated mood, but a lot of these people feel really good. They feel an increase in energy and, uh, and goal-directed activity. A lot of times they're very talkative, and the ideas that come out aren't always going to uh, fit together real well. And a lot of times they'll have really grandiose delusions. Um, for example, feeling like they can... Uh, save the world or uh, become famous and there's also a lot of bad decisions made here so um, a lot of bad uh, sex decisions made um, too much uh, use of the credit card and you gotta have impairment of uh, social or occupational function to, to qualify otherwise uh, we'll be talking about something else and it's not going to be due to any general medical illness and we'll talk about some of the medical illnesses that might look like this. So some other important terms are hypomania, which is just like it sounds, it's a little bit less than a manic episode, has the same, uh, the same criteria except um, it's, it can be only four days long and uh, there's not going to be any psychosis involved. And whereas with uh, a manic episode there might be some, some significant psychosis. And you're not going to see uh, impairment, really, in, in social or occupational function. In fact, a lot of these people do really well during their uh, hypomanic episodes. Uh, but in uh, manic episodes, there's os often hospitalizations, which you'll, you won't see with hypomania. So depression um, is also associated with bipolar disease. That's why they call it bipolar. They used to call it manic depressive. And uh, so remember your, your SIGI caps, which I hope I can remember here, sleep, um, interest, guilt, E, uh, energy, um, C has got to stand for, um, oh, I'm sure you know, I don't, appetite is A, uh, P is psychomotor, and S is suicidality. So, so uh, um, these are the criteria for depression. And we'll talk about how depression fits in with this in just a second here. And then a mixed state qualifies both as uh, depression and uh, a manic state. So you can have a, a really agitated person who is, uh, a, you know, uh, going days without sleep, but they're still depressed, um, and they qualify for for all the depressive criteria as well as manic. And um, so bipolar 1 and bipolar 2 are the two main classifications. They also have a, a not otherwise specified bipolar category. But bipolar 1, you have to have at least an episode of mania. Almost all these people have a depression as well that's mixed in, but you don't have to have that to qualify for bipolar 1. You can just have mania. And uh, bipolar 2... Is involves at least one hypomanic episode, and you have to have depression. So uh, the bipolar two, the de the mania is not going to be quite as pronounced, and depression is uh, a mandatory feature. So the history of this, um, especially for bipolar one, it's going to look like a lot of cycles of this uh, mania back to depression. It's not as uh, quick as a lot of people characterize bipolar, though. They, they're not going to change from minute to minute. Usually it's, it's uh, months um, of, of cycling. So you go through a, a couple months of a, 
of a depressive state, and then you have a, a couple weeks of a manic state, and it cycles through. Most of these people get uh, hospitalized at some point. Uh, most, most often it's depression that you see, not, not the manic episodes. And uh, substance abuse is, is very often a feature in this as well. And a lot of these people try to commit suicide and 15% succeed. So the differential here is unipolar depression, which is just depression by itself without the mania. And um, the big thing here is if somebody comes in with depression, make sure you're using uh, some mania screening questions so you don't diagnose it wrong. Um, the others on this list, it probably isn't as important if you diagnose it wrong because you might treat it the same way. But with depression, we're not going to be using our SSRIs uh, to treat uh, bipolar. So we want to make sure we know the difference between bipolar and depression. So make sure you ask if you've had a period in your life where you were really um, had an elevated mood for more than a week where you uh, stayed up all night, where you uh, made bad decisions. Those types of questions will be really important in your treatment here. Cyclothymia is basically just a, a lesser degree of, um, of, high, of mania and depression. So cyclothymia is often a little bit more rapid progression through the, these cycles and you get your hypomanic and your depressive states, but the only difference is they don't qualify for major depression or, or for uh, mania. So um, schizophrenia is going to look a lot like this in some cases. Uh, a lot of these manic people come in with pretty acute psychosis, and so you will not know, unless you have a good history, whether or not they are schizophrenic or they are uh, bipolar. Schizoaffective disorder is um, is a, basically a, a mix between schizophrenia and bipolar. In fact, um, they they qualify uh, for both here. So if you if you have the criteria for um, for schizophrenia and you have the criteria for uh, for bipolar then you are schizoaffective. Um, and just to, to contrast this for a moment with, with uh, bipolar with psychosis, uh, bipolar um, with psychosis, you have to have your psychosis during one of your episodes, whereas schizoaffective disorder, the uh, psychosis can happen at different times. So if you have somebody who uh, has had a manic episode and, you know, three months earlier they had a period of psychosis that was not related to mania um, or depression, then it's schizoaffective and, and not just bipolar with psychosis. PTSD can look like this a little bit. I don't know uh, much about PTSD. Maybe we'll talk about it on a different one. Uh, drug abuse is going to look exactly like this in a lot of cases, and, and a lot of times it's going to be mixed in with it. So it will be hard to differentiate, especially if somebody is uh, acutely um, using drugs. So, so you might have to let them uh, thaw out for a little while before you, you try and figure out what the diagnosis is. But you'll probably be treating them uh, in similar ways anyway. Narcissistic and borderline personality disorder. The narcissists uh, get a pretty close to manic presentation. Um, they have a real elevated self-esteem and, and a lot of times will be real goal-oriented as well. Uh, medical causes, uh, for example, uh, thyrotoxicosis can, can kind of look like a manic episode. And um, with medication, you know, if you are... Um, if you are taking a, um, oh, I can't remember what the example I was going to use was, um, but there are uh, medications that, that if you take, you might look uh, a lot like um, a lot like a manic 
episode. So the treatment classically has been lithium. We have been using anticonvulsants also interchangeably with lithium. First line in general is lithium plus an antipsychotic. Also because uh, a lot of these people have uh, acute psychosis with this. So uh, you'll give lithium with uh, haloperidol, for example, or li or valproic acid with uh, one of the antipsychotics as well. They there has not been a very definitive uh, winner in uh, medications. They they all kind of uh, are equally effective. So you're going to probably choose the medications based off of side effects more than off of uh, effectiveness. Benzos can be used in an in, in refractory bipolar disorder. You can use uh, ECT, so electro, uh, what is it, electro uh, convulsive therapy and electroconductive. Anyway, you're putting electrodes on the head and shocking the brain. And this is something that isn't used very much just because uh, it's uh, seen as being um, seen as being archaic and and dangerous, but it's actually pretty safe and pretty effective. So maybe it should be used a little bit more. So um, this actually is not a credit from um, this uh, video, but from a different one. So I don't pay attention to it. This is a uh, World Medical, uh, worldmedicalschool.org is the website, and uh, we could use a lot of help. So if you want to volunteer, please email at volunteer at worldmedicalschool.org. And um, also, if you could leave a comment on uh, what could be better about this uh, particular video, that would be great, so we can improve it for the next one. Thanks.